major system in HPC on this moment, on this moment. But the concept is the same uh, with this and the HPC is basically a uh, parallel process. Like we are taking processes that are done sequentially and we process them parallel. Like we know that, uh, you know that, that saying of Kona Kutirume Runa Kombichin, right? So we are putting that in Kombichin. One computer cannot get to one. But if we take, take off, like 20 computers, we can get that job done. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we did the configurations for it and uh, we, after the configurations, uh, if everything is done well, we will run uh, all the programs uh, in that HPC, right? So what we did here was we, we first connected these three computers so that they could look at each other, right? After we connected them, uh, we configured it uh, a system where they share files together share information together, right? And after we config that, we config another software to, to schedule the job, right? A software that gives each computer, uh, each computer their own work, right? This computer, you do this, this Forum computer, man. Uh, for man, each management, right? This computer is moving, this computer is moving. Then after that, it is then install another software that, that monitors uh, is every computing node doing its own job, right? So uh, two one for one. Yeah, so two one for one. So those 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 computing all those computing nodes, they have uh, their names like the scheduling uh, software. Uh, we use talk, right? Then the, uh, the, the the monitoring software. We use the software called Ganglia, right? Ganglia. Ganglia. Okay. It's called Ganglia. So that's the basic uh, information about HPC, like you're just running, uh, what, uh, run, running processes in parallel, like, like take something, split it, in, split it into small pieces, we give each computer its own piece to process it's in parallel, that's the basic understanding. So we can demonstrate the, the packages, the packages that we have installed. Like, like we have three nodes, right? They say we want to, we want to get out from this node, second node, right? Mm -hmm. We install the software processes, so we just write SSH, SSH, uh, compute, uh, two. We are in the second computer, right? So all these softwares make our life easier. We, we will not say it's a computer, you know, right? So we have to move to go to another computer, to go another computer in case. We just do it remote to use it. We don't have a bucket. We don't have a bucket. This is one terminal, right? So, so, and this HPC has its own advantages. Uh, because it is used in, in my researches, like science researches, right? We, we all know the, the concept of, of, of the test of my DNA, right? Those, those processes take days. If they are done in, in no, like, cool. fiscal, <laughs> <laughs> is that done fiscal? But if we simulate them in this HPC, mm. a process that can take ten days, it can be done in less than two hours. Very good. It, uh, so it will speed up time, and it, like we have the 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 the, 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 the program that we want to put like. I, I once saw the news, Shinzi, as a country want to put a satellite on the moon, right? On the on the space, right? In space. In space, right? Mm -hmm. The only way we will do that at a fast process is if we, is, if we use this this concept. And it was it. It's, it's, that's the main role of the HPCs. And it's, so learning this type, type of technology will, will make our country go wide and do more researches, inventing more things, exploring many things that we have never heard of. Catch yeah. up with other countries. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, 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 we don't catch up with yeah. them. We Just don't go the way they are going. Right, yeah. We go where we want go, to go. Go, <laughs> yeah, we go where we want to be. And it's That's being wild. That would be wild. It was a lot. It was a lot, right? Even, even on, 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 on our agriculture, we can use HPC to predict within 
next year we shall have a new bureau. Then we plan. If we plan bureau, let's take our resources and put it on somewhere else. Can I put them bureau? Let's put them in agriculture. Very good. So it's, it's, it's a life change. Yeah. It's a life change. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Which, where, which year is it? Yeah, it's 2 1. 2 1? Yeah. Your name? Alpha. Alpha? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alpha who? Alpha Tembo. Tembo, yes? Yeah. Uh, my name is Tendeka Tawa. Uh, yes. 2 1. Very good. Good son, two, 2 1. Okay. Tapato mm -hmm. Marita, 2 1. This is Luka 1, 2 1. Lamini Brandon, 2 1. On behalf of the Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing Committee and staff, it is both an honor and privilege for me to address this gathering on the inaugural National Student Cluster Building Competition Program. I'll start by giving you a background for well, now, this program started. The ZCHPC launched a pilot program in 2019 to train students in high performance computing under the banner National Students Cluster Building Program, following an approval and subsequent funding of the pro project by the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Innovation, Science, and Technology Development. The program basically aims at equipping students with hands-on high-performance computing skills uh, through building a miniature HPC cluster and compete against fellow students from sister universities. This dovetails with the major functions of the HPC center, which is to provide training and support for supercomputing services to the nation, as well as support national research, development, and innovation for modernization and industrialization. Under normal circumstances, the program is supposed to be finished within a year. However, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, this has taken us longer than we anticipated. Nevertheless, the program was successfully completed within the first week of December 2021. And it is interesting to note that the students from all the participating institutions have agreed to have competitions in January 22, so that it doesn't interfere with examination processes, as well as allowing all the teams ample time to finish their preparations. So basically, the National Student Cluster Building Competition is a research and innovation program. And it's being spearheaded by the Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing, where our undergraduate students undertake a training program to build a miniature cluster. And we've all seen these uh, models which they've been uh, preparing. So, for them to have basic skills of using an HPC. The program pro provides an immense high performance computing experience to our undergraduate students. And it gives the participants insight of how they can use the applications on a high performance computer for research purposes. So in general, we, we want the students to you have research ideas in areas like geospatial and earth sciences, engineering, artificial intelligence and big data, and life sciences, and other areas which can come through. Because in science, new areas keep coming every day. So in addition, the competition demonstrates the breadth of skills, technologies, and science needed to build, maintain, and utilize supercomputers. Hence, inculcate research culture among students in their areas of specialty.
The NSCBCP gives the undergraduate students in the country's universities exposure to high-performance computing, which will undoubtedly lead to the industrialization and modernization of Zimbabwe. This NSCBC will foster critical skills in advanced computational analysis, which may be applicable in intended research areas. So what are the impacts of this program? The first one is to, it increases research and innovation as it will bring out more skills, skilled researchers in HPC related projects, thus enabling the invention of new products and services. We know our minister always says we should learn to produce products and services. So this is what we intend you as students to always think about when you do these things. The other impact is promoting and developing HPC curriculum at the undergraduate level as they will advance their state-of-the-art research by using experimental, innovative, specialized systems and also helping improve the efficiency of the systems. So, we, the minister was just asking me recently, what is the end game? Why are we doing this? What will happen after this? So, to all academics here, we should think about this. It's not only for the Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing people to think about, but you lecturers and you students. Now that we have got you these skills, so what? What are you going to do about it? So we have to think ahead, prepare for the future. So this should be, we shouldn't be talking of an end game, this is a beginning. So I remember someone said, this is neither the end nor the beginning, but this is the beginning of the end. It generates interest in utilization of HPC among undergraduates for research purposes, thereby improving quality and quantity of research outputs. It is an investment into the future generation that will feed the workforce pipeline that drives the country's innovation. The students will have an opportunity to demonstrate how the HPC influenced the world and their learning experience and highlighting the interconnections between the HPC hardware, software, and applications to solve real-world problems. At the, at the same time, it will be exposing students to the HPC and inspiring them to seek their role in creating the next generation of HPC breakthroughs, creating an opportunity for industry national laboratories and academic institutions to work collaboratively to build the HPC community. The students can try their hands on the latest technologies, for example, artificial intelligence, augmented and virtual reality, and so forth. So what is the scope of this program? The, NC, the NSCBC covered the setup of a mini three node Raspberry Pi HPC cluster. The Raspberry Pi nodes are already installed with CentOS 7.9 Linux operating system, which will be running on a minimal install. For this HPC cluster to work, students are expected to configure services on all the configurations, and all the configurations are supposed to survive a reboot of the cluster. So during the competitions, the students are expected to do the following tasks. Operating system initial configuration and setup. Network configuration setup. HP cluster services and authentication setup. Resource manager configurations. Monitoring systems configurations. Parallel programming. And teams will be awarded marks for non-technical competencies, such as teamwork, discipline, and HPC related questions. A team from each university would consist of six students plus two non-participating coordinators and the following eight universities participated in this competition. The University of Zimbabwe, 
Chinoy University of Technology, Bindura University of Science Education, Great Zimbabwe University, Midland State University, Africa University, Arari Institute of Technology, and the National University of Science and Technology. The HPC would like to take this opportunity to appreciate the financial support we got from the ministry for making this competition a success. The ministry is always there for us, and we appreciate our continual help and sustenance we get from the ministry. For the success of the HPC, we succeed together with our ministry. Thank you very much. It is an honor and a privilege for me this morning just to make a few remarks and then number two, to introduce our guest of honor. It is really a pleasure to be here this morning to witness a very important activity in the life of the Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing. After years of limited use, and to some extent neglect, the Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing is about to witness its moment of greatness. At the launch of the ZCHPC committee last year, the Honorable Minister, Professor Dr. Amon Mugwira, said very clearly that the aim is not for this sender to simply be offering technical service to people, but that it will be a place of development where new ideas will be birthed. And I remember he talked about the development of various and different algorithms. So you are very privileged to have a minister who understands what algorithms are. <laughs> I remember you said that very clearly, Honorable Minister. And I, I'm sure the committee took that to heart because it's very important to understand where the ministry is going. The vision of Zimbabwe is to become a modernized and industrialized nation by 2030. But to achieve this, we need first and foremost to build an innovation-led and knowledge-driven economy. How are we going to have a knowledge-driven economy? Certainly, the tools are there. And what we are talking about today is part of what will help us to achieve a knowledge-driven economy, which will help us to achieve Vision 2030 of a modernized and industrialized nation by 2030. Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing shall contribute to this vision through provision of supercomputing services to support the nation's science technology, innovation, research, development programs, and being a catalyst for knowledge generation. Very critical that we must know, generate knowledge. The ZCHPC shall provide support to national development by unlocking value and solving national challenges in the critical sectors of the economy, like agriculture, mining, health, manufacturing, engineering, and academia, among others. High-performance computing technologies, as we know, are at the forefront of many fields. And I was delighted to hear our young people uh, in the room where they were doing the cluster competition talking about the integration of high performance computing with various sciences. I remember one of the ones that I mentioned was biotechnology revolution that is taking place today. That actually high performance computing is going to help to accelerate 
and bring radical changes, increase medical breakthroughs, ensuring that we make greater progress in our biological knowledge, which I think is very critical. And Zimbabwe needs that quite a lot. Access to high performance computing facilities is very central to the importance and success of our industrialization and technological development as Zimbabwe. Through high performance computing, we will be able to deliver knowledge advancement through data intelligence across many of the most important and difficult challenges of our time, from sustainability to the climate crisis to public health and even to security. It is my hope that many of us sitting here today, our young people, are thinking of a career in high performance computing. Very important for you young people. It will help to open the world of opportunities to be at the forefront of innovation. The world is large and the world is open for you. It was a joy to see a Zimbabwean, uh, Manyika, being made senior vice president of Google. Whoever thought something like that could happen. But that's the world that is before you, young people. It is also important for us to know that currently high performance computing is male dominated. Even among you young people, as we were in the room there, I could see many of your groups. There was one female and seven men. I think there were only a few universities where there was 50-50. So we are in a field that is male dominated, but we hope that we'll be able to see a lot of change taking place. So it's a joy for me, it is a privilege to see something brand new emerging that has potential to touch many aspects of science and they help our ministry because the country is now looking up to our ministry to help solve a number of challenges. The Honorable Minister is being given tasks almost on a regular basis. Can you do this for us? Can you do this for us? And high performance computing is going to be very critical in making sure a lot of these things are doing. I remember His Excellence when he officially opened Zingsa and uh, Mr. Gweme was telling him, Honorable, if we had used ordinary computers to do the work you see in front of you, it would have taken us a month processing this data. But using the high performance computing center, we were able to do this in one day. Everything was done and completed. It's a joy to see interventions to normal day-to-day -day activities being expedited and accelerated because of the high-performance computing facility that we now have and that we must make full use of. Uh, finally, allow me to just say I have no doubt that ZCHPC will continue to play an important role in national development. This training that you have received is very critical as the nation needs to develop a new generation of ICT experts who will be able to support our national development. The days when a lot of our ICT people do their work and then they ship it to India overnight so that they can do coding and other things must be over. We must have experts here who can do a lot of this work. So I want to say to you young people, congratulations. You heard what the chairman said, that this is not an end game. This is simply the beginning and more is coming. 
Thank you very much. When uh, it was said here, multiply, it's a very key word, multiply. If you find out that you are the only one who says, it's only me who knows this, it's only me who knows this, it's not only me who knows, it means you are not multiplying the knowledge. And that's, it's not good to say I'm the only. Once you say you are the only, there's a problem. It means there's something that you are hiding. It means you should not be where you are if you are the only. It should be many of you. So this competition is an attempt to produce many of us. I hope I'm saying something. One of the most important issues is to remember always that as a nation, we are determined to become an upper middle income economy and more. That's what His Excellency the President, uh, Dr. Idim Nangagwa, said, and that's what we believe as a people, and that's what we believe as a nation. But always when there's such a powerful vision, there is need for the development of the word which I'm going to say here, my honorable students, I'm going to call it capability. And please take note, capability, are you able to? Are you able to? You can wish whatever you want to wish, but if it is not accompanied by capability, it remains a wish. So capability is key. What are you able to do? It's very important. So this word of a vision, this vision is very important because every country needs a dreamer. A dreamer, Muroti. But the dreamer has to be followed by a set of capabilities that are deliberately developed. Deliberately. Not accident. So I think that's what we are there to do is higher in tertiary education, innovation, science, and technology development. When we say educate, we mean give capability. Capability to meet our wishes as a people. Now, when the president, his excellence, says, Nika Inova it's part of the vision. Because you have to build your country on your own. In, even when you invite people, it's you who has to invite them to go come and work on your project. It's called the national project. The national project of bringing dignity to your people. Because that's what education should do. It should bring dignity. And dignity comes with capability. If you can't do anything, dignity cannot be assured. fufu. So it's very important always that we pay attention to capability. And there must be conviction. So what kind of student, what kind of graduate are we aiming to produce? It's a graduate who is a leader. It's a graduate who is a leader. What does a leader have because tell you what, when you say, once you are called like my uh, professor, you are already on sunset. It means watokura. <laughs> it basically means there has to be the next generation that has to be equal or better than what you can do. And normally it's better if they are better. Now, that graduate has to have 
I can call three to four characteristics. The one is integrity to mission. When you say you are doing this, you are doing this for a greater cause. You are just part of a bigger game. So you should have integrity. Integrity does not mean good morning. Say, I'm always saying that. It does not mean good afternoon. Integrity means faithfulness to mission. The mission is for the prosperity of the people of this country and the dignity of the people of this country so that there's no more humiliation. Insert. Can you read? When we say, can you read? It means, can you read beyond what is written? Can you read the vibes of where the nation is going? Can you read? Where are we going as a people? It is very important. Can you read that we are trying to give dignity to the very same people? Can you read that this nation needs that? Can you read that it is your responsibility to build this nation? Can you read that you are not a victim? Can you read that you are a victor? Can you read that we have to move? That's what I call insight. And second of all, when you are working with your colleagues, are you helping them to be better people? Are you not elbowing them out? In other words, are you inspirational? Are you giving more energy? to your colleagues. So, I believe with these three eyes, we are creating the leaders that we need. And of course, when we do all these things, we need humility to know that it's a privilege, it's an honor to be where you are. It's an honor in the first place to live. Therefore, make sure that around you is peace and progress. That's the leader that we want in our students. And the other issue, like what you were doing, I was listening very carefully, and I could see that these people they pay attention. Your paying attention is very important. You pay attention. I want to repeat this word called paying attention. It's a key word. Whatever you do, whatever you study, pay attention. Pay attention. Good morning. Okay. Oh, Ah, naka garapan pa grip tag, kiri tag pa ni sependa in rock. Saka si, uchi da sependa in rock yue. Uchi dar, uchi chaka ma relationship sujide. Uno taura ni muti uka kupa mshonga. Muti taka taura na woka tipa fenicho. Iko zinu taka tipa muti yue nika kuweza u kariri. No, u fe, zesa zati kushandisa. Taka wona isusu kutima sai sai. Ano gona ku kepi chwa ni chini ichi chwa tinu ti microphone. We paid attention to sound. We paid attention to how it is propagated. We paid attention to all materials that transmit sound until we were able to make this microphone. That's paying attention. I believe as you go by what you are doing, you are paying attention. Never. 
kana ukasanga nika kanjike kana pasi uri tarise kuti chiji vunza mvunzo kuti chi why how for what reason paying attention is part of why we create institutions of innovation of education of science and of technology Tinenge tichifunga kuti we are creating a place where people will sit down and pay attention. Kuti haina kanzi ndi pay attention kuzuza engineering. Kuti vone kuti i material yakangomira se. Can we use it for this? If you look at the whole world and what we call development and not development, it emanates from paying attention to the world around you and understanding it in such a way you could not yes. Good morning. Chabvuma. Kubvuma. Kwe material. Kwe nature. Ndiko kunonzi kufunda. Ndiko kunonzi. Ah, uya. Akashika paru. Is not a running juice. I, 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 I hope I'm, I'm saying something. <laughs> it's all about paying attention. People paid attention to the extent that there is even when you look at the cell phone, ukati shua shua munu waka kazira chini ichi muroi. Muroi. Uyu. Kutishua. Tesla waka chitaura in about 1856. Tesla. We all know Tesla. Aka taura kuti. In future. In future. People will be able to talk all the long distances. With a device. Inda ya munocha kasha kata uko na Tesla. Tesla wakanga akaita pay attention. Akavona kuti ha. Sini zini tikesh. And so forth. That was the beginning of the invention of the telephone. And the cell phone that we see today. I could even stop here. And he said, when you were building your clusters, I hope you were paying attention. As you, as you were paying attention, and as you were, I am not sure if you Anna. Can Anna work now? I am not Anna work now. That comes to me as down on the Anna. Anna on the edge. You need to see how I Cyclone Anna. Now, literacy in the 21st century, besides reading that we know, now we are not. Ah, it's magu. It's 97 percent literacy. So, you can knock. You can knock. It's an important beginning. But it's what is she? It's the beginning, like what Chairman Ben was saying. It's the beginning. Literacy, you can't go there. You can't go there. You can't go there. You can't go there. So it's very important to be able to read and write because that's decoding. But scientific literacy is very important. Numeracy is very important. One, two, three, Moshipirita, Tuchina, Shanta, Natuchino, Rosero, Vamu, Kumi, Unoeri, Ngairi. I see two literacy. Cultural literacy. Cultural literacy, ndiyo kuti. Uno mbonza aniwe. Uno ziva wele, kutu wangu anu, nani. Who are you? Can you relate with people? Can you empathize with the needs of your nation to the extent that you begin to develop the capabilities that push that nation forward so that when you die, we do, you don't only live through reading your, the inscription on your gravestone, which might actually be removed by Greta. Do you live beyond the life and the symbols that we see, or do you live through generations, through providing the solutions that we need from this generation to the next generation and forever? Financial literacy is at the core. So today we are talking about ICT literacy, numerous, we are talking about every kind of literacy in high performance computing. It is therefore why we launched the science park that houses the Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing. We, this is not a monument. 
It is a place for work. It is a place for paying attention. It is a place of moving our nation forward. It is our, a place for giving our people dignity through knowledge. It is a place for inspiring our young. It is a place for insights. It is a place for integrity. It is a place for humility. It is a place for giving national capability. We know today the world is being run by algorithms. <laughs> For all that I would was about algorithms. Algorithm. At least we can Algorithm. Do pay? Which are a set of instructions for solving a problem or accomplishing a task. A task. Cooking is not going to be called an algorithm. It's not going to be algorithm. It's not a temperature. Isap, Gajgari, Kwewa now. Algorithm, Ngot, Kurunga. Eh? Algorithm, Inoti Uvu. Algorithm, Inoti Mvura. Algorithm, Inoti Teshens. Algorithm, Inoti Result. Ichi Chilia. If you understand life as a, a, a network of algorithms, you would understand why we need the quick solutions in the implementation of these algorithms. And you would understand why we need a Zimbabwe Center for High Performance Computing. No kuti ati algorithm no kids a number. That's not get a funga algorithm. So if you want to say, yeah, I'm doing computer science. What is the center of computer science? The center of computer science is empathizing with the world's problems first. Next is to develop an algorithm to solve them. If that's not how you understand computer science, that is the reg. Now, the world has largely been run by algorithms. And in computing, there are about, about nine to 10 algorithms that are central to the way we run the world. The web is based on the page algorithm, isn't it? And so forth. Now, automation of algorithms is very important. Sakataka automata kubika. Fana waka pika waka tumizai. Bodra wakuti guatamatik. Rino, rino vaiza. Ruisa ufunengu wa zakakwana. Rokurunga. Romona. Romira. Roti ti 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 ready chipi chipa kura. I, I hope if <laughs> once we understand this, life becomes very simple. Those are tongo da. Ananda ku kia, ananda healthy, ananda ku under security. So at the end of the day, what algorithms are you producing for that? Our core tasking of the ZHPC is to work on programs that develop understanding of HPC, and then develop algorithms based on that. We made deliberate decisions that include the engineering division, applications that include life sciences division, for applications that include um, uh, the geospatial division, space science division, for applications that includes data science and data analytics, artificial intelligence. It's, 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 it's based on that. And when we are doing this, we are very deliberate. We said as a country, when His Excellency said in our modernization agenda, human capital and knowledge are going to drive it. We then said, OK, what do we need? We need some inputs that are very clear. We need processes that are very clear. And we need outputs that are very clear. In other words, our inputs are our people. In and our heritage. Our processes are the configuration of our systems, including education 5.0. We, 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 we devise to say, how can our students use the HPC? Because we are just talking about it. We must have a method of involving them. Then, Anaka Sirori came up with the national cluster building competition, which is at the beginning, which we are doing. Now, HPC in Dimui, 
It means now it can be used by you. And our output is the modernization and desolation of Zimbabwe. Where we walk with our heads high. Not to put And I think that kind of moving, it's good. That's the confidence that we want to build in our students. That we can take on the world and you are just as good as anyone. That's what we are looking for. So, that's the essence of Education 5.0. That's the essence of what we are doing. And our National Cluster Building Program is expected to expose students to HPC, inspiring them to seek their role in creating the next generation of HPC technologies, as well as create opportunities for industry, national laboratories, and academia. We are informed that eight universities took part in this year. I saw them myself. And we thank you all for having coming together and participating in the competition. As you know, at the end, in any competition, we are all winners. Because there will be no competition. You win a better competition. So first of all, the winning is that the competition is there. But the most important part is not the competition really. It is the fact that we're able to come together and do one thing, and pay attention to the HPC processes. Raspberry Pi, 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 So we really believe that through these processes, we are trying to build a new culture of national collaboration, of national collaboration, networking our brains for a common purpose. And you must know the final ultimate purpose of education is to give dignity to a people. Dignity to a people come when they know what they're doing, when they can produce their own food, when they can transport themselves, when they can sleep well, when they can provide their own solutions on health, on everything. That's dignity to a people. So education is a step towards achieving ultimate dignity as it is envisaged in Vision 2030 of an upper middle income economy. Students, I am very happy to have talked to you today. And we are saying we are building the science and innovation ecosystems. And we want, I, I, I heard, I think it was at Midlands, somebody said something very profound. When they said, we want to, we want to do <laughs> doing things that will surprise ourselves and surprise many. This is exactly the country that we want to build. And uh, we need this kind of mentality in order to drive our country and our world forward. Integrity, insight, inspiration, with humility, while paying attention to give the country the necessary capability that it needs. I thank you. Innovation, innovation science and technology development, Professor Dr. Eamon Murira, the Deputy Minister, Honorable Raymo Machingura, the Permanent Secretary, Professor F. Tagwira, the Chamber role as teamwork. Because for you to be able to build anything, you need to be able to work with others. Of 70 points, our leading team with 66 points is the University of Zimbabwe. <laughs> with a strength in showing teamwork as well as their understanding of the cluster technology. This is what gave them an edge.
So for their representation of University of Zimbabwe, they've gotten a Raspberry Pi, but they're also going to receive individual prizes for being the best participants. Their demonstration in aggregating resources is what also gave them the edge. So well done, MSU. So they are, as well as everyone else, going to receive a certificate of participation for participating in the National Cl Student Cluster Building Competition Program. Better and uh, nobler cause than when our dignitaries take time to celebrate what's within the young generation. I thought Professor, Professor uh, Honorable Dr. Murwira is now very old until I heard him saying to the students, yo, what's up? Yo, big up. And I said, that's, uh, I said, let me learn the algorithm of greeting from the minister. And, uh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, pr uh, uh, our Honorable Minister, please, uh, I shall uh, last one last time invite you to come forward. Uh, one more time. Honorable Minister, as I invite uh, Madam um, Handi Katari, in her respectable capacity, to hand over a token of appreciation to the honourable uh, guest of honour for the job well done. As the honourable minister receives his token of appreciation. Thank you very much, honourable minister. That token of appreciation is an indication. <laughs> Firstly, I want to appreciate our guest of honor, Professor Dr. Amon Murira, for gracing this occasion. We are honored that you are here with us today, sir. My gratitude also goes to the parent ministry, the Ministry of Higher and Tertiary Education, Innovation, Science and Technology Development for championing the innovation and industrialization through technological advancement. We appreciate this student cluster building project and hope for its continuation with your support. With emphasis on collaboration with the industry of ICT sector, I want to thank the ZC HPC, the Zimbabwe Center for High Performance.